I would love to know from from each one of you, um, what is a chapter in the Bible that you find yourself going back to often? <gasps> nice. All right, um, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's a very challenging prayer. Uh, thy kingdom, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth in my life as it is in heaven. In other words, I'm convinced that real faith, the biggest challenge for many of us is the will. Submitting my will, your kingdom, your will be done, not mine. And so I have to pray that regularly. And that's right out of Matthew chapter 6, the Lord's Prayer. Mm. Then I go to uh, Hebrew, uh, Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 to 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you. In other words, give his attention to you and give you peace. And I long for that peace. And then I love Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. I need to be restored. Mm. And then I love- Saying that just brought me so much peace. I love the Beatitudes, which start the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So if anybody says to you, a Christian is someone who lives according to the Sermon on the Mount, the first Beatitude says you can't live up to this standard. You've got to be poor in spirit, which means to acknowledge my poverty of spirit, that I need God's grace, I need Christ. Amen. Amen. So those are some of the passages. I love 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking. And 1 Corinthians 15, the resurrection chapter, is a great chapter on the resurrection body, on the resurrection of Christ, because that's the basis of hope for the future. Mm. So those are some of the verses that have meant a lot to me. That's beautiful. And do you, find, do you find yourself that you go back to those a lot to find peace and comfort? Yes. Mm. Peace and comfort. Also, how am I going to handle this situation? Mm. You know, I, I, recently I was reading in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, you know, you've heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. You've heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate the Democrat. You've heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate the Republican. But I say to you, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. Amen. Now that's the most difficult thing for me to do because I naturally hate my enemy. I don't love my enemy. Yeah. And yet to watch in our culture how Democrats and Republicans, very nice people, have started hating each other. Whoa, that is tragic. Yeah. Really tragic. We have such no. a divide. Yes, exactly. To divide, 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 and, and be cool by ripping someone to shreds, that's not cool. That's degrading a human being created in the image of God. It's, it's so. I don't know how people could handle that because unless they just lie to themselves and they bathe in lies, but like when you point somebody else's flaws out so like willingly, it's like, to me, I get so uncomfortable. Even when Good. other people do it, I get so uncomfortable because yep. I'm like, whoa, I don't even want to be around the facility. I yeah. feel like they're doing witchcraft and I'm like, I don't want that voodoo to come over here. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. when you look at somebody and you're judging, I just go, I know I'm going to be standing in the most vulnerable, naked in front of my God. And like, he's going to point out even the sins that I've forgotten about. Mm -hmm. And I'm over here like, dude, you need to chill out with this, this and that. And it's just like, <laughs> shut up, shut up, you know? Um, but I want to circle back to the first Bible verse you said where it was the, the, the prayer. Mm -hmm. Our Father, by, um, our Father, thou be in heaven. Who is in heaven? Who is in heaven? Mm -hmm. um, me and my mom. I was having like a little debate with my mom. My mom goes, you know, you gotta. She she says that in a Syrian. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's Beautiful. it's a very, very it's from the language that Christ spoke too. But I had a problem with it because I here's the thing, we just had a beautiful conversation, right? We had a beautiful conversation before. If I came here right now. And I said the same exact thing to you that I did last time. I don't feel like it's a real conversation. I feel like it's a, a chant, somebody who's babbling. Good. Um, I think that the exact prayer was God explaining to us all, these are the things you need to hit, mm -hmm. you should talk about, but it should be in your own words. It should be between you and God. Good. I see my father is like my actual father that's on earth is like, we have a relate. He's seen me more than my actual father on earth. So like, I want to be like, instead of me being like, 
uh, give me today my bread, right? Like, mm-hmm. it's just, I want to talk to him about my finances. Like, hey, I'm stressed out about this. Give me the faith to know that what I have here is good enough and I mm-hmm. don't need anymore. I need to be in depth. I don't just ask God, hey, come into my work. Because if I, if God was right here, he would just look at me and be like, okay, what part of your work? So I want to be elaborate. I want to be very, very detailed. Sometimes when I'm praying, I'll like, I'll pray for an hour. Sometimes I'll pray and it'll take me 30 seconds. But it's a real thing that I'm talking between God. What are your thoughts about people that believe that they should just say that specific prayer over their meals, over their bedtime, when they wake up? They just kind of say the same thing. My mom, she goes, I say the prayer, and then I talk to him. And I go, "Good. why? Okay, so you're saying good. But yeah. in my mind, I'm like, hmm. that's... That's like weird. That's like if I came to you and I, and, and I know this sounds disrespectful, but I'm being I'm being serious. Mm-hmm. If I had a ritual where I had to rub my yeah. elbows and my ears, yeah. I just feel like that'd be annoying. Like the guy's Good. like, dude, I have somebody in Africa right now I'm talking to. Like, get to the point. Like, what do you need from me? Like, what are we talking about here? Stop rubbing your elbows. <laughs> Good. Okay. It's the issue of ritual. Yes. Ritual can be mindless, empty, and meaningless. Yeah, because you it's get into practice. It's just done by rote. You just do it, right? Yeah. But every night raising him up, I would put him to bed with a Bible story, a prayer, a memory verse, and we'd sing, turn your eyes upon Jesus. That was a ritual. Mm. We did it every day. Ritual can be good when we are reminding ourselves of the basic fundamental truths about God and Christ. It, ritual can also be important when you pray before meals as a way to grow your faith, as a way to remind yourself of what is significant. So ritual can be bad, empty, meaningless, mindless, or it can be very good in that you are teaching the next generation and you're also growing your own faith, reminding yourself of the fundamentals. So So you're you're saying, I'm so sorry. So you're saying, okay, there's two versions of this. Yeah. Georgie Janko, who's over there. By the way, the Baba Mishmeya, Baba Mishmeya, Pasha Kishimuch, Etel Makiyut, Chorazach. I don't even know what I was saying. Mm-hmm. I don't even know if yeah, they're yeah. like, what's, what's uh, Baba mm-hmm. Mishmeya? I don't know. I just learned to say this. And this is my prayer. I feel like that's dangerous because when all the other kids were around, they're not even having a connection with God. That's one whole thing. Yep. The second one is I'm just rushing through it so I can have my meal because I'm taught. I have to right. say this right before I say my meal. Right. But then you're saying there's a difference yep. from Georgie versus my mom who's honoring God and saying the words. Absolutely. Knowing what she's saying behind Absolutely. them. Feeling that Christ asked her to say this. And then when she's done with that, she puts it aside here. Yep. And then she speaks to God yep. with her own words. That's right. God's seeing a faithful woman that's trying her best to honor God. Yep. Correct. So Very I'm a doo-doo intense. brain. I owe my mom an apology. And I would say that that is one of the strengths of the Catholic Church or the Assyrian Church, Orthodox, right? Mm. It's the ritual. Now, you know that when you go into one of those churches, it can be a mindless, meaningless, dumb ritual. Mm. Or, as in the case of your mom, it can be incredibly profound. Mm. So when I say the Our Father, Our Father who is in heaven, I'm thinking, I'm beginning to think, Father, Jesus is the only one who taught us to talk to God as Father. It means he loves us. He protects us. Who is in heaven? He's in another dimension. He's a lot bigger than I am. Hallowed would be your name. Awe. If I lose my awe of God, I'm sunk. My fear of cancer, heart failure, whatever, had better not be bigger than my fear, my awe of God. See, it's as I grow in awe of God that my anxiety, my fears begin to settle down. And when I lose my awe of God, my fears and anxiety escalate. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Here's the old issue of will. I've got to submit my will to Christ. Otherwise, you know what's happening? And it hit me really hard. If I lose my awe of God and my desire to do his will, the God I believe in always says, good boy, Cliff, keep going. Do exactly what you do. God and I never have a disagreement. So you know who the God is that I worship? An idealized version of myself. Of course God and I are going to have disagreements. He's God and I'm Cliff. And we both have wills. And I better learn to submit my will to him because he's wiser than I am. He really loves me. He's really good. I am not. And therefore, I better take my will and surrender it to him. So I begin to break that Lord's Prayer down and begin to I say, okay, Father, hallowed be your name. What does that mean? And then all of a sudden, it takes on new meaning for me.